Hey tires, Darren here, back with another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a pattern I call the Balking Shrimp. It's a variation of the Rebecca Manta Shrimp. This has the addition of a couple hackles just to give it a little bit more action in the water. And it's uh, tied a little bit differently with the legs and I tend to tie this with heavier lead eyes and I try and stay away from the barbell uh, brass or either just the regular stainless steel um, bead chain eyes. They don't have enough weight to flip over this particular pattern so you want to make sure that you do have that weight so that the fly turns properly and you get the proper presentation. So the fly is pretty straightforward um, so let's have a look at the material list and get started. Get a fresh hook in the vise. So today I'm using a number two Superfly saltwater hook. And we're going to use a six pot tan thread. This is a the UD tan. And we'll just start by Putting on a base layer of thread here. And then roll that back up to the eye. We're going to start by putting a pair of uh, lead eyes on this fly. So we want to make sure that we've got lead uh, or something very heavy. You don't want bead chain or even brass for this. These are a little bit oversized and it's going to ensure that the fly turns upside down and that we get the presentation that we want. So when I tie these eyes on it just simply do cross wraps like this and then I'll give it a pull and then I'll come from the other direction a few wraps Give it a pull just to kind of snug off anything and then I'll put some wraps underneath there just to kind of create a bit of a, a base and then I'll continue and I'll do that a couple times just to create a nice firm base and then your eye might move a little bit it's not going to move around too too much so you should be fine. All right, that looks pretty good. Just want to take a look from the front and uh, make sure that it's straight. It's good. Next, I'm going to take some tan craft fur. So I'm going to take a fairly big cl clump, probably about. Um, well, it depends. So I'll show you here. It's about almost an inch square material. I'll just bunch that and then cut it off the, uh, the hide, I guess. So then we're left with this. So we've got different lengths, and I'd like to leave the wispy and so it gives it a, a nice natural looking taper and I don't necessarily need a thicker end down here so we'll just tie that in you want to just kind of pull everything up so that it's on the top of the hook shank now we'll come in here and trim that up If you want to add a little bit of marking on this, take your sharpie and what I do is I just kind of flatten it in between my fingers 
I'm going on both sides. And we'll just go along the length of the tail there, put in a few bars. So you can kind of see that when you do the um, marker on there, it kind of sticks those fibers together. So then I just take a brush and just give those a little bit of a brush so that they're not sticking together. Still get the barring in there though. Next I'm going to take a piece of pearl crystal flash and a piece of black crystal flash. I'm just going to take one piece of each. I'm going to tie those in as the antenna on the fly. And I just like the uh, contrast that you get from using one of each color. If you don't have the black or you don't have the pearl, I'm sure it's totally fine to just skip that. So I'm just going to extend those a touch past the tail. And I'll tie them in first on the close side. Then I'll pull those over and I'll secure them along the other side and then I'll just take them up and measure them. They don't have to be completely equal or anything that's just kind of optional. So next I'm going to take a grizzly saddle. I'm just going to take a couple of these shorter hackles near the front. I'm just going to take two. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them front to front so that the concaves face outwards. And I'm just going to line them up on the hook here. And kind of strip those back a little bit. And we'll tie those along the side or near the top and I like to just fold all my hackle stems just to make sure that those are secure in there so that gives a little bit more action to the fly as well all right next I've got uh, some eyes that I've made I'll do another tutorial for these but it's pretty simple it's just a piece of monofilament and then I've just put a little bit of uh, a knob on the end so you can melt that and add a little bit of polish and whatnot so I'm going to take two of those I want to just make sure that you got two that are about the same size And I do these up ahead of time. I'll do a batch of a few dozen. And uh, you just want to make sure that you give them lots of time to dry before you use them. Because if you don't, they'll tend to stick together if you press them. If uh, they do that, then they haven't cured enough. So for this pattern, I want these to sit right at the base here. So we'll just measure those out. And then we'll, with the back of our scissors, we'll just snip the the uh, uh, waist ends. And probably need that a little bit shorter even. So what I like to do is, when you tie this in, you'll kind of find a little bit of a shelf here in between the top of the hook and the side of the hook then it fits just perfectly snug in there and then we'll do that on the other side probably just need that a touch shorter 
And then I just like to snug it in behind the the uh, barbell eye if I can. So that eye just kind of sits there. And if you want, you can just take your finger and pull it out a little bit just so it doesn't totally melt into the body. All right, so next we're going to take a little bit of tan senyo dubbing. And uh, we're going to need a fair amount, I guess. So it's probably enough for this size to fly. So what I like to do is I just start by putting on a bit of a noodle, um, about three inches. And then I'll just start by kind of putting a few wraps close to that eye and then coming back. You can use uh, any kind of legs here. My preference is to use uh, silicone. So the ones I'm going to use today are these orange tip olive legs. So I'm going to go ahead and take three of those off this uh, uh, silicone tab. I'm going to take the first one here. And one thing about these is the uh, distribution of the color isn't usually very uniform in that you've got more orange at one end than the other. So what I like to do is just kind of match up the orange area and it'll come and I'll tie that right on top of the hook shank. Add a few wraps and then I'm just going to give it a bit of separation and we'll just use a couple wraps of thread to kind of secure that down. We're going to come in with a little bit more dubbing. And we're just going to wrap back into those that first set of legs and then come back. And we're going to put in our second set. Basically the same as we did the first. But I'm just going to leave a little bit more of the olive showing on this one, so I just kind of get them a little bit longer each time I tie them in. So just a little bit of separation there. You don't want it to come down on the sides, just when it lays on its back, you want these legs to be on either side. So that's basically all we're trying to achieve there. Let's snip that. I'm going to add a little bit more dubbing. And we need a touch more there. All right, and then we're going to add our last set of legs. You may notice this is quite a bit similar to uh, Rebecca Manta Shrimp and it is in a lot of respects, but just a few little differences on the fly pattern to set it apart. So again, we'll split those legs a little bit. And we got a little bit too far down. Now we're just going to come in and finish this fly up. We're just going to add a little bit more dubbing. If you want to put a, 
uh, weed guard on this, you can go ahead. You don't typically do it unless uh, I get a request from a client to add a weed guard. And so we'll just figure eight, a little bit of dubbing, just to cover up the thread wraps in the eye. Just kind of taper that a little bit towards the head. And there we go. I'll just add a few wraps here at the head. Just clean this up. Pull that extra dubbing out of the way. And we'll put a extra half hitch. Just to make sure this isn't going anywhere. And there you go. That's the bulking shrimp. Now one more step you can take is just to um, trim up these legs and for that I usually just kind of angle them to the back and just uh, cut the tips like that. There you go. Thanks for stopping by my fly tying channel and watching my tutorials. If you're new here and like this sort of thing, why not hit that subscribe button? I'd love to hear from you, so if you have anything to say, leave it in the comments below. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.